Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, of course I thought that I would give my final fight breakdown, my final fight analysis, and my final fight prediction of the very big potential great matchup between that of Devin the Dream Haney and Vasily Hightek Lomachenko. And this is going to be a great fight. Of course, many of you that know both fighters, Vasily Lomachenko, of course, at one point in time, was looked at as the former number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter. Certain people, of course, would debate that he never deserved to be there. In my view, he did. Because, of course, Lomachenko, at one point in time, he was debatably the most dominant and also debatably the most skilled fighter in the sport of boxing. And, of course, he was running through certain decent champions, Pretty much like they were amateurs. But of course, once he went up to the 135 pound weight division, he did start to look a little bit more ordinary, which of course you expect to a certain degree. But of course, Lomachenko had the division nearly unified. I believe that he had, at one point in time, three out of the four main belts. Of course, he did end up relinquishing, excuse me, relinquishing one of his titles. I believe that being the WBC title, ironically, against that of a potential Devin Haney bout. Now, who knows, could that maybe be because he was trying to get the bigger fight against Tifima Lopez at the time? Or maybe was it because he saw Devin Haney as a little bit too much trouble for what he was worth? Who knows? Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe he saw Devin Haney was a little bit too much trouble for what he'd be worth and he wanted the bigger and the bigger money fight against Tifima Lopez that he thought maybe would take his career to the next level. But as of right now, when it comes down to it, the big fight for both fighters, of course, at the current moment in time, especially for that of Vasily Lomachenko, is going to be that over Devin Haney. And Devin Haney, of course, he now is a complete unified champion ever since he was able to defeat George Cambosis. And the big question now is, who is potentially going to win this fight between these two highly skilled combatants? And I'm going to give my fight breakdown and my fight prediction. And as always, within my early part of my fight prediction videos, I kind of go with who I believe is going to win the fight just personally. And then I'm going to go into why and what both fighters are going to need to do, in my view, in order to win the fight. Personally, who do I believe is going to win the fight? I personally am going to go with that of Devin the Dream Haney. Now, I've said in the past that this could potentially be a very difficult fight for either gentleman. And either gentleman really could pull off the fight because I think that they both really have the type of style to beat one another. I think Devin Haney has that type of rangy style and bigger, slick style that will give Lomachenko some problems, combined with the fact that he will try to mix it up with you here and there. And Lomachenko, he's also a type of fighter that I believe can defeat Devin Haney. You know, someone who's very defensively responsible, someone who has great movement all around, great footwork, very quick, decently powerful, and just an all-around very high IQ level boxer. I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be the biggest fight of both of their careers, including that of Lomachenko's. Because Lomachenko, even though in my view, at what point in time he did deserve to be the number one pound for pound boxer, if he does not get this victory over Devin Haney, I think all Lomachenko is going to be remembered as is someone who was a great talent, but not someone who was an all-time great fighter. And that's not me saying that he was not a great fighter, but there's a difference between someone who's an all-time great fighter and someone who is just a great fighter. And I think that if Lomachenko can win this fight, that he could potentially be debated as an all-time great fighter. And I understand people will say, well, is that really fair to Lomachenko? Because Lomachenko has gotten big wins in his career. He did beat Nicholas Walters. He beat Gamal Rigondeaux. He beat Gary Russell Jr. You know, and maybe even Jorge Linares, if people were to count those wins. But at the end of the day, besides maybe Gary Russell Jr., Lomachenko was expected to win all those fights. And that's not me saying that those fights were not A-grade fights. They were A-grade level fights. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be counted as one of the all-time greats, you still have to be decently dominant moving up the weight classes and move, excuse me, and win some of your big fights there. And to be quite honest with you against Tiafima Lopez, even though I thought it was a little bit more competitive than what the judges had scored, you were supposed to win that fight. And in my opinion, Lomachenko, for the standards that were held for him, he kind of showed up in disappointing fashion. And certain people, of course, they said, well... That was potentially because of a shoulder injury, or I thought Lomachenko was more accurate than Tiafima Lopez. It was a fight that could have went either way. And listen, uh, I think that it was a fight that you could maybe argue potentially could have went either way. I think that it was very close at the end, but 
I still gave Tiafima Lopez the fight because Lomachenko really just didn't do anything for the first five to six rounds. You know, he would throw about maybe three to five punches per round. And I'm sorry, but that's just not going to give you the fight. And I understand that Lomachenko showed better defense in the fight than Tiafimo. He showed better head movement. But what he did not show was that he was willing to do enough in order to win the fight. That he was not willing to put on the pace. That he was not willing to put on the pressure. And that's something that Lomachenko is going to have to do in this fight in order to win the fight. And that's really my main question about Lomachenko in this fight. Is he going to be able to do that against someone like a Devin Haney? Someone who outreaches him by almost several inches. Someone who's going to be taller. Someone that, you know, and I know certain people on my channel or certain people in general, they say, oh, well, you know, Tiafima Lopez had power and these other boxers had power that Loma had problems with. Devin Haney doesn't have that level of power. Lomachenko's just going to break him down. Do I personally see that? No, I don't. I think that if either man is going to win the fight, at least if both fighters bring their best forward, I think that it's going to be a very tough and competitive fight. And if Lomachenko ends up winning this fight, I could maybe see a dominant performance, say about eight rounds to four. But do I believe I am going to see that? Not personally. I think that if Lomachenko is going to win the fight, he's probably going to win the fight somewhere around seven rounds to five. Maybe, maybe, maybe at best eight rounds to four. I just can't see anything past that. And the reason why I say that is because I don't really know how much Lomachenko is going to be willing to really get in a war with Devin Haney. Lomachenko just at times seems to get very uncomfortable when he feels he's in a vulnerable position. And of course, to a degree, you should. Because the objective in boxing is to hit and not get hit. We all know that that's the main scientific part of boxing, that that's the sweet science. You know, that that is, you know, the best thing to do. But at the end of the day, there is times where you're in the ring and you got to say, you know what? I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and I'm going to have to really make this guy uncomfortable. And yeah, I'm going to catch a couple here and there uh, when it comes down to it. But at the end of the day... I'm going to have to fight for my life in this fight, and I'm going to have to really take it to him. Because if I don't, I'm not coming out of this fight as the winner. I'm not coming out of this as the survivor. In order for Lomachenko to win this fight, he is going to have to prove to me that he's willing to put on the pace, not just in the second half of the fight, not just starting on from round six onwards. He's going to have to put the fight on from round one onwards. And it may not just be because of Lomachenko's tactics. It may also be because maybe he doesn't have the stamina nor the physicality at 135, because some of these guys, to be quite honest with you, at 135, they probably are natural 140 pounders, certain fighters like that of a Ryan Garcia, a Devin Haney, and maybe certain other fighters like a T. Fima Lopez, those guys probably are more of natural 140 pounders, but still Lomachenko is going to have to take the pace on them in order to win this fight, and that's really my first question about this fight, that's why I'm going with Devin Haney, because not only is he coming off a great confidence and not only is he a type of style that can give Lomachenko a great amount of problems, but Lomachenko has shown me in the past, at least against T. Fima Lopez and also against Jermaine Ortiz, that not only does he have a little bit of a problem with some of these bigger, long, more lengthier guys at the 135-pound weight division, but that he is a little bit tentative to throw with them, especially in the early part of the fight. And his main strategy a lot of the times has been okay, uh, you know, kind of let them punch themselves out, you know, in the beginning of the fight. I'm going to kind of play a little bit more of a defensive role, make sure that I get hit the minimalist amount of times that I possibly can or the minimal amount of times that I possibly can. And then in the second half of the fight, I am going to completely surprise them and I'm going to expend a lot of my energy or pretty much everything that I have. And that's great, but Lomachenko is going to have to take a different approach here. So the real question is, is that is Lomachenko, is he going to fight him from round one, uh, round one onward? Is he even capable of doing that? I don't know, and that's not really a confirmed answer for me, so that's why I'm going with Devin Haney. Not only that, but Devin Haney is pretty much going to have almost every physical advantage in this fight. He's going to have the reach advantage. He's going to have the height advantage. He's going to have the weight advantage. He's going to have every single advantage in this fight possible. The only physical advantages that he may not possibly have may be the power and may also be the speed. Now, in terms of an all-around athlete, I actually believe that Lomachenko is the better athlete of the two. But still, when your opponent is bigger than you and probably a couple weight classes bigger than you, because Devin Haney, once again, in my view, he's probably a natural 140 pounder and certain people may say, well, that's just an excuse. Well, it can be used as an excuse against a fighter of a lower caliber. Like if you're talking about against a fighter, like if Lomachenko is fighting Jose Pedraza, and people are saying, oh, well, he's two weight classes bigger. You can use that excuse to an extent. 
but it only becomes valid once you really get in the ring with someone that truly knows boxing ability and boxing crap, say like this. If, if Devin Haney eventually gets in the ring with the Terrence Bud Crawford or Nero Spence Jr., let's just say that the size is going to be much different. I mean, Devin Haney might be able to eventually build himself up to welterweight, but it's obvious that there'd be a size difference there. It's the same thing with Lomachenko and also that of Devin Haney. So certain people are saying, oh, well, that's just an excuse. I don't think it's really an excuse, uh, you know, but I just think that it's just pointing out the obvious. Now, once again, what I will say is this. If you're one of these guys that claim that Lomachenko was going to beat up Devin Haney or completely wear him down in the fight and knock him out and stop him and claim that Lomachenko is still above Devin Haney and that he is going to beat him, then you should not really make that excuse because in your view, Lomachenko, he's good enough even with his size disadvantages to beat that of a Devin Haney. And there's a lot of people that have claimed that. So like I said, we'll see what happens there. But like I said, we'll see what happens I am predicting Devin Haney to win the fight. I believe that he's going to be the more active of the two fighters. I really hope that Lomachenko, at least for his sake, and for the fight of being very decently competitive, at least for both fighters, really putting everything on the line. I hope Lomachenko at least tries to put everything on the line. But he also is 35 years old. And once again, certain people may say that that's also an excuse. I don't think it's really an excuse. It's just that not every fighter age is the same. A lot of people like to compare the Floyd Mayer the Jr., and they like to say, well, Floyd Mayer the Jr. was 35 to 36 years old when he fought Canelo, and Canelo was 23. Right, but not only is Lomachenko not the fighter that Floyd Mayer the Jr. was, at least in my view, not even just in terms of complete skill set, but also in terms of physicality, he does not have a 72-inch reach like what Mayweather had. So even when he's moving up the weight classes, he can handle some of these bigger guys a little bit easier than what Lomachenko is ever going to be able to handle those guys. Because Lomachenko has a 65-inch reach. So a lot of people always say, oh, well, Lomachenko, he only fights mainly in the pressurized style. Loma can kind of fight in a multitude of ways, but he is going to have to mainly fight in that pressurized style because what else are you really going to do? You're not going to be able to fight on the back foot against guys that outreach you anywhere from three to several inches. It's not going to happen. It just is what it is. You are going to have to try and attack those guys, period. Even Floyd against guys that... I reached him a little bit. He had to attack them a little bit more, like Oscar De La Hoya or Diego Corrales. Now, sure, he had his defensive moments where he was on the back foot, but he was a little bit more offensive in those fights than what he could have been in other fights. So it just is what it is. You're going to have to do that against the guy that outreaches you. And is Lomachenko going to be willing to do that? Is he going to be able to close the distance and throw consistently? And more importantly, outland and outthrow Devin Haney and be more active and show better ring generalship and a better game plan throughout 12 rounds? I just don't see that happening. Not me personally. That's not me saying that it's impossible, but I'm just not quite sure of that. Anyways, just to get to the points of what both fighters will need to do in order to win the fight. What do I believe Lomachenko is going to have to do? Like regular, he's going to have to really use his elite footwork his elite head movement and his elite defense to pretty much stay out of Devin Haney's range. But what he's going to have to do, or I really shouldn't say stay out of Devin Haney's range, but what I mean by that is that he's going to have to really use that to mix up Devin Haney to confuse him. And with that, he's going to have to really throw that left hand down the pipe, get some body shots in there early, use a great amount of lateral movement, you know, try to use certain angles, get Devin Haney, try to catch him off guard. A lot of times Devin Haney can be caught with his head a little bit too far down the middle, a little bit too much on the center line. He is not great at moving his head. He also, a lot of the times, keeps his hands down when he shouldn't be. And Devin Haney, in my view, he is not an A-grade level defensive fighter, even though, of course, he fights in a somewhat defensive style because he likes to fight on the back foot. But defensive-wise, I don't see him as a guy that, in my view, has A-grade defense. Now, his defense might look better in this fight because he's fighting a guy that has a six inch reach disadvantage over him but that's where Lomachenko is going to have to come in Lomachenko is really going to have to make this uncomfortable if you can push Devin Haney up against the ropes and get him to kind of cover up maybe get him to I'm not going to say submit but if you can get him to be very uncomfortable you can get some great shots in on Devin Haney because once again he's not a guy that has the greatest of defenses he does not always keep his head off the center line or excuse me yeah like I said off the center line uh, when it comes down to it, and a lot of the times, he can be hit. We've seen it against Jojo Diaz. We've seen it a little bit against George Cambosis. we also seen it a little bit against Jorge Linares. Now, I do expect that Devin Haney is going to try and be better than what he was in those fights. But that's what Lomachenko is going to have to do. He's going to have to really move in and out 
of the ring, excuse me, not out of the ring, excuse me, but he's going to have to move in and outside with certain angles. He's going to have to really use his feet. But there's also going to be something that Lomachenko is going to have to do that I have not really seen him do against certain fighters of 135. At least I certainly didn't see it against Teofimo Lopez. He's going to have to try to outcounter Devin Haney at times when he's throwing punches. There is going to be times where he does that. And Lomachenko a lot of the times, especially at the 135 pound weight division, he was much more comfortable with doing that with people at the 126 and the 130 pound weight division because he could. Because he knew that he could exchange with those guys and still somewhat avoid their punches because their arms are pretty much comparable to his arms and they more than likely are not going to reach there before what his punches do. But against Devin Haney, against guys like that, there is going to be times where you're going to have to try to outcounter them. Where Devin Haney might throw a shot and you're going to have to dare to throw a shot right down that center line. Or you're going to have to dare to throw a counter shot when Devin Haney throws a shot. You're going to have to do that. And Lomachenko is not always comfortable doing that. All right, especially at the 135 pound weight division. So he's going to have to be very, very careful of that. And Lomachenko is going to have to really make sure that he's not too repetitive. Once again, get that left hand down the center line. You know, kind of move off, get some body work inside the clinch. Devin Haney can be hit. Devin Haney and his father and his corner, I believe, have already raised concerns about that. That means to tell me that they are worried about Lomachenko a little bit on the inside and inside the clinch. So you are really going to have to utilize those advantages. There's also going to have to be certain times where you really hurt Devin Haney on the inside. Once again, a lot of people, they look at Lomachenko and they're like, oh, well, he's not really that good of a puncher. No, Lomachenko actually is a great puncher. He's not a guy that, once again, has Javante Tank Davis power or anything. But he is an A grade level puncher. When you take a look at the fighters that he's able to completely dominate or stop, like he's able to stop certain fighters that have never been stopped before in the way that they have been. You know, like Nakatani and, you know, that I believe of Anthony Kralla and some of the other guys. Like he's literally able to pound certain people into submission, not just with his boxing ability, but also with his all around athleticism. Lomachenko is one of the best all around athletes, not only just in boxing, but really in the world today. And he's going to have to show Devin Haney that. He's going to have to show him that, you know, get certain body shots in there. When you're inside the clinch, get little hooks inside on the body. Try to bully him around, you know. Now, once again, it's also going to be interesting to see whether Lomachenko can do that or not because Lomachenko, once again, <laughs> he is a little bit uncomfortable, uh, I believe, with the size of the 135-pound weight division. And I'm not quite sure if he's going to be able to move Devin Haney around or bully him as much as what he can with other fighters. Because Devin Haney is going to have great stamina in the fight. And it might just be that Lomachenko doesn't really turn up the pressure in the early part of the fight. Because he may not have the stamina to really go that full force throughout 12 rounds against a natural 135 to 140 pounder. Because if he might, he might get potentially stopped. Who knows? That's going to be another thing that we're really going to see in this fight. Does Lomachenko really have the capability to even beat Styles or, or you know fighters of that size? It may not even just be completely his skill set. It might just be his size. Once again, he has a 65-inch arm reach, and he's not a natural 135-pounder. So like I said, we'll see what happens. As for Devin Haney, what do I believe that he's going to have to do? Pretty much keep Lomachenko at bay, kind of like what a T. Fima Lopez and also of what a Jermaine Ortiz did throughout the fight. You're going to have to utilize that jab, utilize that jab down to the body, and also throw a good right hook to the body of Lomachenko. Throw a good one-two, and if you're going to throw a right Throw it a lot of times to his body because if there is one major deficiency that I've always seen with Lomachenko, he doesn't really block the body shots very well. And that was one thing I seen with Tiafimo Lopez with how he was able to counter Lomachenko. When Tiafimo was on the front foot and when he was actually on the attack, Lomachenko was very uncomfortable. And when he knew that he could not get in without getting hit, it showed a little bit of a limitation in that fight. Now, maybe he's going to adjust better in this fight. We'll see. Like I said, he's going to have to. But there is one major weakness that I see in Lomachenko's game, and that is that at times when people throw at him, sometimes he's not always comfortable throwing back. And you are going to have to do that in order to be successful, period. Some of the best punches in boxing come when they're countering against a guy that is setting up a punch. All right, He needs to counter punch much better in this fight than what he did against Tiafima Lopez. Now, of course, he turned it up much better in the second half of the fight. He cannot afford to do that. So if Devin Haney, once again, if he can catch Lomachenko, you know, with certain body shots early, kind of get him to the body, give him flashbacks of that T. Fima Lopez fight. And on top of that, 
keep distance well. You cannot allow Lomachenko too close on the inside if you're that of Devin Haney because if you consistently let Lomachenko land on the head, if you consistently let him land, he is going to potentially hurt you and he is going to build confidence because kind of like Devin Haney, Lomachenko also finishes very, very strong in the second half of the fight. So my advice to Devin Haney would be try and circle to Lomachenko's right, which means that in your position, you're going to have to circle to his left Try to use the elite footwork positioning, or I shouldn't say elite footwork positioning, but use the foot advantage on the outside space, which means that your lead foot is going to have to be on the outside of Lomachenko's lead foot. You know, of course, you're going to have to mix it up here and there. You don't want to make it too repetitive because Lomachenko will eventually catch you. You're going to have to sometimes double jab, even triple jab him sometimes. Go to the body with that right hand. At times, Lomachenko does not like it, especially when you're throwing a long-range counter and he does not feel that he can get in there. He will get uncomfortable. So that might be something that you can take advantage of. You know, also mix it up with him a little bit. Show that you are not afraid to mix it up with Lomachenko. Now, if he does get a little bit too hot on the inside, and if he does end up starting to land punches, you are going to have to judge distance and probably fight a little bit more and that of the distance you're probably gonna have to fight a little bit more on that of the back foot which is also going to be interesting because it's also going to be very interesting to see whether Devin Haney is going to be able to fight Lomachenko on the inside because I could see Devin Haney you know making Lomachenko uncomfortable on the inside I could also see Devin Haney possibly getting dominated on the inside it really depends on what happens but if Lomachenko does try to go on the inside you know don't be afraid of Lomachenko you are gonna have to show him uh, that, you know, you don't necessarily respect him, that, you know, you are going to get yours just like he's going to get his. Because if you don't, and if you end up submitting early, Lomachenko is possibly going to dominate you throughout some of those rounds. He's going to dominate you throughout the mid-range if you just show him that, you know, yeah, you can hit me, and I'm a little bit afraid of that power. You can't do that as Devin Haney. So you're going to have to throw that right hand down the pipe at times. Maybe, you know, throw a good one, two, maybe, you know, a uh, good one, two, three, maybe a jab and then a right cross and then, you know, a hook to the body. You know, a lot of the times with your combinations, you might have to throw certain ones to the body, throw to his body consistently because Lomachenko is not usually comfortable with that. And I'm not quite sure if he knows how to counter a certain style that is that much lengthier than him. And on top of that, that attacks his body very early on. A lot of the times he's not comfortable with it. As for the clinch, Devin Haney is also going to have to watch out for that as well because Lomachenko at times will like to punish his opponents inside that of the clinch. You know, maybe try to push him up against the ropes or try to fight back with him a little bit in the clinch. Once again, show him that you're not afraid of him because whoever shows that they're afraid of who, this fight is almost like a game of chicken. Whoever shows that they're afraid of who is pretty much going to lose the fight. If Devin Haney ends up reclusing back into his offense because he gets hit a little bit too much, and if he fights with Lomachenko too much in the mid-range while getting hit, Lomachenko more than likely is going to win this fight eight rounds to four, possibly, or seven rounds to five. Now, Lomachenko, if he shows very early on that... <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if Lomachenko shows very early on uh, that he is not willing to commit to his offense and willing, you know, sometimes to be risky or at least overall to be courageous and to really try and win this fight to go on the inside, he's also not going to win this fight either. That's why this fight's going to be very particularly interesting because Devin Haney is going to have to show Lomachenko that I'm not going to let you bully me. And Lomachenko is also going to have to show the same. This fight is really about courage. It's really also about making the proper adjustments. Both fighters are going to need to make the ultimate adjustments at times. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting. Once again, Devin Haney He's going to have to try and adjust to Lomachenko's great inside game and great mid-range, also do his great angles and his great head movement. And Lomachenko is going to have to try and adjust to really see how he can get around Devin Haney's size and his jab and his offense and his slickness in the first place. So like I said, this is a great fight. I personally predict that Devin Haney will win the fight probably around seven rounds to five, eight rounds to four. But it is going to be very particularly interesting. Like I said, in my view, if Lomachenko is going to win the fight, He's going to have to at least for sure, undoubtedly, win three of the first six rounds of the fight. There's no debate about it. He has to for sure take it because if it's too close, in my view, they will give it to Devin Haney. They will. But it is what it is. So like I said, we'll see what happens. Uh, but going to be a very interesting fight. Hopefully both fighters lay there, you know, uh, lay a bit, lay the best fight that they possibly can, lay out the best amount 
you know, of effort that they have on the table. We'll see what happens. You know, it's going to be very interesting. As for Lomachenko, this is a very big fight for you because this is pretty much debatable your last hurrah. I don't know if I really see you getting another big fight after this fight. Javante Tang Davis, of course, he's talked about debatably fighting Lomachenko. But this fight is going to take a lot of energy out of Lomachenko. And I'm not sure whether he wins or loses if he's ever going to be the same fighter again after this. He is 35 years old. And this is going to be a great amount of effort for him. And if he doesn't play his cards right, he could get potentially damaged in this fight. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. I'm going with Devin Haney by unanimous decision. I predict him to win. I'm going to say eight rounds to four. But I would not be surprised at all if Lomachenko ended up winning this by unanimous or split decision. Wouldn't be surprised at all. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's right about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.